Thank you for watching. Today I'm with Jimmy Sweeney, the Celtic Warrior, uh, four time, three weight, bare knuckle boxing world champion, and widely considered to be the best bare knuckle boxer in the world right now. And today we're going to be having a chat about uh, Jimmy's life, his career, some of his motivation for fighting, his toughest fights, uh, and a number of other subjects. Uh, so we'll see what comes up there. So thank you for watching. And Jimmy, thank you for taking the time to talk yeah, with me, uh, no, no problem at all. Thanks for having me on your show, mate. All right, my pleasure. My pleasure. So, I mean, starting at the beginning, um, starting at the beginning, bare knuckle boxing, um, how did you first get into it? Because obviously, I know that you had a very successful um, amateur career, mm. obviously with the gloves, um, with the gloves on, as far as I'm aware. But obviously, in the beginning, you were drawn to um, bare knuckle fighting. What was the initial um, inspiration for actually getting into it? I been 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 an uh, been an Irish traveller. Kind of bare knuckle has always been it's always been like part of our culture. So I've, I've always been around it. Even as a as a small kid, I've seen it. Like my father fought bare knuckle, and my brothers fought it. Do you know what I mean? So it was always a so it's part of our culture. But uh, I remember myself, I, I was never I never really fought in it. Like I never did the whole travel side and like um, outside ring fight and all that. But uh, yeah, as you said, I I had a decent career as a, an amateur boxer. Uh, fought the likes of Andy Lee, Spike O'Sullivan. Stuff like that, um, for 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 Ireland and Irish titles, but um, yeah, I was uh, I was going to go pro back when I was like, when I was like, um, thirty or twenty twenty four something like that. So about eleven years ago, years ago, but unfortunately, uh, a, a night out resulted in me going away for a bit of time, and uh, it felt something that uh, that obviously I regret, and uh, if if it could change things, I would. But uh, I come out then three years later, and. Um, I was actually getting ready to 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 fight a cousin of mine, and uh, I, I've known Jim Freeman for for a while. And um, I, I looked at the bare knuckle as as over here as, as just just a way of getting me a couple of fights before I, before I had to fight the cousin. But um, as travelers go, sometimes uh, fights and feuds get called off, and we shook hands. And so, but I still I still went into to the the bare knuckle over here. I fell in love with it. And and then I could I could do something that I love, but it, stuff like that, and and keep my family safe, and and yeah, I could I could actually do it and earn money doing it as a professional. So uh, yeah, I stuck I stuck at it, and that that's really um, it, it's uh, giving me my love my love for bare knuckle, bare, do, doing bare knuckle legally and uh, doing it safely, and uh, yeah, I've, I've been doing it ever since. Okay. And you touched on something there, Champ, that I just want to go back to. Um, you know, you touched on obviously always being part of your heritage, part of your culture. Now, now your, yeah. name in, uh, your name in the ring, the Celtic Warrior, it, it's obviously a tribute um, to your heritage, I, I can imagine that. But where did that yeah, name that. Um, first appear? I mean, was that your idea or did, that, did someone no, else? No, no, no. What happened was um, when I come over, they did, a, did like a competition. Uh, to to give me a name, and there was a couple of really really shit names going around. Like, <laughs> you know, I mean, it was a couple of go on. But uh, the the promoter and owners, Joe Joe Brown, actually picked him because uh, uh, obviously I'm a Celt, and uh, he probably was a fan of Steve Collins or something. But uh, yeah, he 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 picked it, and uh, he 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 won the competition. So yeah, he got free tickets. <laughs> so yeah, it just, it just come about by um just uh. Just a competition for um, just just a name, just a name me. So. Okay, but, uh, but it's 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 a good name and it 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 suits, especially with being a Celt and all that. And uh, I am definitely am a warrior, so it's a, it's a name that really really uh, suits me. That's true. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. So I mean, in a bit now, I'd like to get to the future. But before that, I, I'd like to sort of look back on your career a little bit and obviously you've had some amazing wins uh, obviously with the world titles but you know defeating um wealth boxers defeating you know um people like melvin gillard it was in uh, mma in the ufc i mean is there a particular moment in your career that's like the proudest moment uh, i mean maybe there's more I, than one i i'd say i'd say that the, the proudest i've been that is is Beating Sean George for the for the lightweight world title and and becoming a, a three time a three time world champion, I've come 
and that's like a, a light weight that, that was like 76 kilos and I, I fought up on when I first joined I, I fought as high as 94 kilos so uh, for me to to for a guy who doesn't really train and 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 to lose that much weight and get down and and still still, still gain like uh, world titles in every division I was in but but that that really for me stands out as as the biggest achievement is um, becoming a, a three world champion. So yeah, that, that really stands out, and and that, but that that that'll be but the proudest the proudest moment for me will will be will be taking back my taking back my world title of, of Franco. That that'll be the new proudest moment of my career, and, and that's just a it's just a matter of time before that happens. Excellent. Okay. Now, something else that um, that I want to talk about here with that is obviously, you know, you've been competing at, you know, at the very, very highest level in bare knuckle boxing for a long time now. And I've got to touch on motivation because obviously it takes a lot of um, a lot of dedication. You know, you've got a lot of heart anyway. I mean, everyone knows that. But what I'm trying to say is what actually keeps a person motivated for you personally? Um, I know every fighter wants to be champion. But yeah. I've th- got a feeling there's more to it with yourself. So, what, what is your actual fundamental um, motivation? My, 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 yeah, mine is mine is my dad actually. My, mine is my my dad, and and um, I do I do everything that I ring for him. But my motivation is is, is for him to like. I want to leave a legacy that will never be forgotten. I I, I want to be. In a hundred years' time, I'm, I'm people still talking about me as the greatest bare knuckle fighter that, that's ever been. And my, my motivation now is, is 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 like is world titles, I'm getting as many world titles as, as I, I possibly can. I've three now, but with the new weight divisions coming in, it, it's 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 easy. It's well, it's not easy, but it, it's possible someone is going to try to uh, catch me. So uh, I've another. There's there's two divisions I'm looking at for so for to get to, to the five way world champion and, and this is this is what I'm aiming for. This is my legacy. I, I want to do something that's never been done in in, in the sport and has never be be um never be done again. So this is the most me and and, and I want I want my kids growing up like being proud of their dad and what he's achieved in in, in this sport. Yeah, so it's just basically just this is what I'm. A, a lot of people to grab one world title, they're happy with it. I mean that's that's their life achievement, and they can go out and that. That's not for me. I I, w- I want to grab as many as I can. I want to be that greediest fighter gone, but I, I want to get I want to get to five at least five, and 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 I feel, I feel that that's very achievable for me. And and at thirty, I'm near, I'm near thirty six now, so I don't really have a lot lot long left in in the sport. So I just want to grab that five and, and uh, go out in there and, and be happy with what I've done. Excellent. Okay. Well, uh, you know, I mean, I think 100% you can and, and probably will um, do that uh, very soon. Yeah, de- looking back on, yeah. on, oh, you definitely will. But looking back <laughs> on the world titles so far, I mean, um, obviously you've made it to, to the top of the mountain, so to speak, um, you yeah. know, is one way of putting it. What did it actually feel like to, um, to achieve winning, obviously, you know, four world titles, but um, what did it actually feel like to go through that, that experience um, and make it, as far as you have, what's the actual experience of, of winning a title? Do you know what? It, it's a lot of people. It's to, to me, it's, it's to me, it's just just it was just an, uh, another fight and, and another win. You know, you know what I mean? It's people, people look at go, oh, you're world champion, three way world champion. How, how does it feel? How you might give must feel? To me, it's just it's it's just it's just number. It's just fights. It's just it's it's it's. To me, I'm not, I'm not finished achieving what I want, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna set long on like being not happy with what I've done. I'm not happy with what I've done yet, but when I when I get to where I want, I, I would be, I, I would be I'd be over the moon what I've done. But for me now, it's just they're just world titles. It's not they're not any anything special or more than any other fighter. Just just a couple of world titles for me, and uh, yeah, it's not it's not it's not to get too excited about just yet. Okay. Okay, well, I can see where you're coming from. Um, I mean, you know, as a person looking on and somebody who follows your fights, um, I'd say, you know, it's, it's an amazing achievement from a perspective. But I do, I fully understand what you're saying. So that, that's fair enough. And I mean, in terms of, this is one you've probably answered a lot of times before, but I still want to throw it in there. 
In terms of the toughest fights that you've had, I mean, in Bernard, every fight is, is bound to be pretty tough. Yeah. But is there is there one that stands out? Um, yeah, where... yeah. It's that little Mexican. <laughs> 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 Fuck, he was tough. Yeah, um, that Puerta, uh, nine weeks before that fight, I, 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 the girlfriend said to me, Fucking hell, he said, your father, your father, and your four, she only care her. So I rang Jim, Jim Freeman, I said, Jim, I gotta come to camp. I'm fat. Anyway, come down. So I come down, I jumped on the scale, and I was 94 kilos. I was 94 kilos. I, co- I come down to camp at 94 kilos, and, and the fight, the fight weight for that was, was 74. So 20 kilos to, to lose, and, in nine weeks, the morning of the I was like it's over, so I had to jump. Obviously, I stayed in the sauna too long. I lost four kilos, so I come in at seventy-two kilos. So I lost twenty-two kilos in that camp, so like nearly four stone. So, uh, but the first couple of rounds, I felt all right. I felt good. I was boxing, them. but but uh, I kind of got a bit cocky and just kind of relaxed a bit too much. And he and he hit me with a right hand in the third. Now, when he hit me with that right hand, I, I couldn't feel the fucking thing. But uh, all I can remember is uh, I was at home with the girlfriend watching a movie, and I just said to her, "This is a shit movie." Then I just shook my head and I said, "Fuck, I'm actually in a fight here." Uh, so that that fight, then I got up and I just and I dropped him twice during that round. And and you know what? Every time I hit that guy, he just looked at me and and gave me this look that he wanted to kill me. So I just ran like fuck. That was the toughest fight I ever had, man. He was a tough, tough lad. Okay, and, and there's something else there that, that you mentioned uh, a little earlier on about the world titles, and you mentioned the way you think of it. But in terms of mentally preparing for um, fights, you know, of this level, fights in Bernard, I mean, what goes through your mind on the run up to a fight? Um, from you know, like in the mental aspect, because people always talk about the physical, don't they? But yeah, yeah. About, about um, the do, do you know what? I'm I'm calm. Like I'm I'm. It's, it's, it's not. To, to, like I'm not saying cocky or anything, yet, but I'm so used to this. I'm so I'm so used to fighting. I'm so used to it. To me, it's just another day in the office. You know what I mean? To to me, it's just it's just my mentally for me is always the thing is is the weight, the weight cut, losing the weight, getting on the weight that morning. That's the biggest thing for me is making is making weight because I, I struggle to make weight, and and I always like for my last even my last fight I had to lose four kilos the, the morning of the fight kill me so that's the biggest thing there but once I make weight then every, everything like it's, all, all I'm just thinking about is the fight there's no like I'm not thinking about anything bad I'm I'm, I'm, I'm visualising what, what I'm going to do when I come into the arena I'm visualising what I'm doing in my changing room what I'm going to do with the walkout how I'm going to how I'm going to start the fight stuff like that goes, goes through my mind you know what I mean so with, with fighters it's all you have to get in a good good frame of mind, a good positive frame of mind before you go into the fight or, or the morning of the fight. When, when you start when you start doubting yourself or putting little things like that, that's when that's 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 when like the battle is nearly lost at that stage. So it's all, it's always good to give yourself positive positive our thinking throughout, throughout the day as soon as you get up and just think positive. Don't don't let any doubts because all the work is done at that stage. You know what I mean? So try to be as positive as, as you can and, and visualize the stuff you're going to do. So it's in your head. It's not new. So it's all in your head already that you've done it. So there's not new come into it. You know what I mean? So I'll always go in there with that mind frame. That's a really good insight into it because, you know, it's something that people don't get just from watching the fights is, is obviously um, people don't always see what the fighters actually go through themselves. So it, it makes sense. Now, it's another thing. It's another aspect to this is that obviously you've seen, um, bare knuckle rise in popularity from a perspective now i know it's always been um part of your heritage and it's always been popular sort of underground but obviously you know now like selling out the o2 and you know getting mainstream media and and obviously you've been a big part of of that process so what are some of the changes that you've seen since you first got into into bare knuckle you know however many years ago to now um because you've seen it come you've seen the actual support come a long way yeah yeah, the, the biggest thing is like it's the biggest thing that would like it's accept it's it's accepted and it's like it's like it's it's it's, it's accepted for for like families. You know what I mean? For, to bring kids with you no know, before when I when I first come to all that before uh, it was all gangster stuff and it was all tough men's underground all that. But 
now the biggest thing is now it's a sport. That's the the, the biggest thing of now. Before it, it, you couldn't call it a sport before the 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 the, the, the fans, not the fans, the people there associated was all they're all shady people. It was all uh, like Dave Courtney's fucking back garden and stuff like little barns and stuff, you know what I mean it was always kind of dodgy kind of shady stuff but, but now the biggest thing is we're, we're accepted you know we're accepted by the go to um, people are coming in and accepting like BKB as, a, as an official sport now and that's a, and that's what we've that's what we've we've, we've uh, been trying to do and trying to make it and, and that's just the 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 hardest thing was to change people's uh, thought process on, on, on BKB and uh, I think we've we finally done that yeah, yeah, I'd agree. I mean, it, I, I've personally followed it for for a long time, and it, and it's been nice to see that development, uh, in, like you, well, into the mainstream, basically. I mean, into yeah. into the mainstream and the big time. Now, there, there's something else there that um, that you know that I'd like to touch on. Is obviously you're a very technically skilled fighter. I mean, you know that's something that that a lot of people who follow you will know. But for anyone who's watching this who doesn't know that, you know, you're, you're a very technically skilled fighter. I mean, in terms of um, your best attributes um, as a fighter, I mean, you, you know, you've won all these fights inside the distance, mm. beaten the best. Um, what sort of separates you from, from the rest? And I know earlier you were saying they're just world titles and they're nothing special, but mm. it's got to be something going on where you're cut from, from a different cloth, so to yeah. speak, to achieve. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just me. Uh, do, 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 I don't know. It's hard, like it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard for me to say. Like it's easier for someone else to to look at me and say, "Boom, this is what separates Jimmy." This with this, you know. But, but when you when you look yourself, like, and I I think for me it's just for my my, my boxing my, my boxing my boxing IQ IQ is um, is so much higher than 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 anyone else in in this sport. And that's not being bad to him, but but it is. But my timing. My time and my man and my movement is, is when I'm on form, it's it's spot on, and that's the real thing that separates me from 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 many of these fighters. Is that that timing? My, my and it doesn't really it doesn't really um well it kind of helps being able to punch punch as well. So, but if you watch my fights, you you see the you see the time just a split time, my little head movement of my shots, thing that really separates me from from them. And plus, I'm I'm, I'm I'm willing to to do whatever I have to do in that ring to to win, and I'm 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 get like I'm willing to give up anything in that that ring to win. So that's what the but the the, the main thing is is my my time and my my boxing IQ in the, in that ring. And plus, most people are beat before they even get into the ring with me. To be honest, so that helps as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the mental side of it, it does. There's another aspect to this. Is I I saw an interview that you did um after one of your fights where you were talking about having broken hands and you um oh, yeah. I can't hands remember hands. I'm sorry but I can't remember which fight it was but I remember you showed the camera um and and everything I mean in terms of injuries and in terms of that side that was of the poetic fight yeah oh yeah it was that's right yeah I remember now right afterwards in terms of injuries I mean was that like was that your worst injury and I mean what what happened there I have the worst hands ever I, I shouldn't I shouldn't have this many fights with the hands I have. Every fight I have, I come out like like that. Like my hands are that bad in the change room. I can't even undress myself. I mean, I I have I have to get my family to to literally change me. Like like put my put my clothes on. I can't I can't move my hands. But uh, all my fights are are, are like that. But uh, I remember I went into the second lane fight with a broken hand. You know what I mean? So. It's just this. It's to to me. It's just like it's mind over matter, and that's just just you just you just have to get on with it. So, but I I know in a fight my hands are gonna go in the first or second round, and, and I have like seven seven round fights. Uh, so you're basically you, fighting you, part of the fight. You just kind of have to. Yeah, I fight most of the fight. My hands are, are. If you look at my fights in the ring, all that, I can't close my hands. Now we can close them anyway. But my hands are, are. After every fight, you look at them, and I walk around like that. They're in bits. You know what I mean? But in 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 there, you just kind of have to just. You just kind of have to deal with it. Now this is not. I I would probably like end up with like arthritis or something like that, and my hands are, hands are fucked. So that's that's why I'm trying to get this five world titles as fast as I can so I can I can retire my my hands have all mashed up to bits. 
Which, okay, yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm the worst. I'm, my hands are like paper, paper mache. They're, they're, they're the worst hands in beer knuckle boxing. I mean, that's amazing. I mean, just just on a personal note, that's amazing because uh, of everything you've achieved. But yeah, uh, but there you go. So another thing is obviously there's a lot of people um, now who you know look up to you. Um, obviously for for everything you've achieved, and I know and I know you've got more to achieve, and we'll get there in a minute. But I mean, what sort of impact do you think that you've had on uh, on your community, on the sport? Because I would say. Go on, carry on, yeah. No, go on, go on, go on, sir. Go on. I'm just going to say you're an inspiration to people. That's that's all. That's where I'm going with it. But oh, yeah, what what do you, you think? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Do you know what? Um, uh, my my main thing is like just just like I'm 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 great. Like I've I've never really caught, I've never come into this board thinking oh I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a hero to people. I'm gonna inspire people on that. Do you know what I mean? It just just kind of happened on that, and that's probably. That's probably my biggest achievement and, and the stuff that uh, that I love most in 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 BKB. But one of my main things is, is uh, I'd like to see more travelers get in, in involved in 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 this board. And the reason why is because if they're fighting bare and they're getting paid for us on TV, they're not going to be fighting each other. You know, you know what I mean? And be less feuds and uh, family feuds and stuff like that. So this is what I'm I'm hoping some of them actually. Go and say, look, let's do what Jimmy's doing. Let's let's get paid for it, and let's go into the, that that line of of bare knuckle boxing. And in, instead of like falling out with each other and feuding with each other and, and uh, having to fight like that for pride, you know what I mean? It's, it's, that's not good because what happens is too many feuds and the kids are getting arrested and people are getting shot up and stuff like that. And you, you know what I mean? This is it's, it's not good. Yeah. But yeah, do you know what? I've 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 got. The amount of messages that I, I've got from people that, that also all over the world and, and like uh, messages like that, that they really get you and like like tell me how much they're and how much like, they they were going back to the gyms and they were going boxing and stuff like that and you, you know what I mean that and, and and that's lovely to hear and I think every sports person should should aim for stuff like that and and, and to be seen as as a, a role model for kids and and. And, and use what, what they're doing as a positive. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's another thing, actually, that, that I want to talk about is if you had to give sort of advice to somebody who, um, you know, wants to get into the sport, bare knuckle boxing, or Go maybe on. not just... <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, somebody who wants to achieve in, you know, in life, though. Yeah. I mean, you know, because obviously you've achieved in life, and I know there's more you want to do, but... Yeah. You know, you, you definitely just, are. You know just, just don't, just don't give up. Just, just don't give up. We've all, we've all come in pair. Of, even myself have come, come line and, and I've wanted to give up and stuff like that. You know what I mean? And I, I've pushed through and I, I've, I've followed my, my, my dreams and, and, and I said to, to anyone grow up, whatever you're doing and whatever sports you're doing, all that, just, just don't give up and, and keep at it and keep putting the work in every day, and you will achieve your, your, your dreams and or, give it. Give it your best shot. As long as you're happy in yourself and, 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 and you know that you've tried, that's all you can do. And, and just, just don't give up, though. Brilliant. Okay. Now, uh, there's only a couple more things with this, but I mean, I, I would like to get to, um, obviously, future plans, which you, know, you, you touched on earlier with winning another world title. Um, but I mean, how long do you think you've, you've got in the sport? And, and also, after you do retire... What do you plan on doing? I mean, do you think you're going to train people, or I mean, let's just talk uh, about the future. Yeah, the future. Um, in you know what, after this, after this fight with with Franco for home, well, I will get my, my world title back. I think I'm gonna. I, I fight five, six times a year with hands like mine, and and especially now with a with a little kid now. My my son's eight eight months old. So uh, after this fight, I think I'm gonna. Um, I'm only going to fight about twice, twice a year, so that's that's going to prolong us. So I get another, I could fight for another two, three years, two, two fights a year if I, if I wanted to. But um, after this fight and a couple of more, I'm going to really sit down and, and think about what I'm what I'm doing. Like um, I really want to, I really want to open a gym. That's what I want to do. I'm going to open a gym and, and pass on my my knowledge to to the kids going to come up today and. Uh, you know, what I mean, Ho- hopefully get them get them off the streets and get them boxing instead of um, just just hanging on the streets, smoking, drinking, and getting into trouble. 
Excellent. Yeah, well, that's, that's a great motivation, and, and you know, obviously, the world needs um, the world needs more of that type of thing. Um, you know, it, it needs more people helping people and and giving back. Um, exactly you know, does. yeah, yeah. Um, you know, in, in all fairness, champ. I mean, that that's a lot of you know what I wanted to talk about. Um, I mean, what's good about it is that obviously you you've talked about some stuff without me actually asking. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I oh, am. Um, yeah, I'm used. I'm used to all this kind of. I just, I just waffle on, man. I just, I just keep talking. You know what I mean? So, but yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's kind of. Uh, it's a great interview because I'm really uh, got on stuff that, that I want to talk about with the gyms opening up and their uh, kids and, and helping people. So, th- thanks for that. That's okay. I mean, my plan with this is, but like I say, was to do an interview that's a little bit different to you know what you usually see. Um, and and I hope you know I hope it's done that, and I hope it's sort of opened up yeah, you to, to talk about some stuff. But before we you know before we wrap it up though, I mean I'm just going to throw this out there. Is there anything you want to say to people watching this? You know, to your fans or anything at all that you sort oh, of hold no, on to? You know, you know, I I, I can I can't thank my fans enough for for the for the for the loyalty and the support that they've they've shown me through throughout the last five years of of my career and and. Even after my last fight, and, and people have been having messaged me, and even when it came out the other day that we're fighting again in September, like the messages that I've been getting from from fans and well wishes on that, you know, what I mean, they're, they're they're a massive part of what we do, and and we couldn't really do it if it, if it, if it wasn't for them. So I just want to thank them from from the bottom of my heart for for the support they've shown me. Excellent. Okay. Well, champ. Again, I mean, thank you very much for your time. Uh, I really appreciate thank it. you so much. Sorry, thank, you, thank you very much for watching um, please subscribe to the simply inspired youtube channel and there'll be more videos coming soon